Please open your Bibles. I'll be reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible today and turn to Mark chapter 4, commencing verse 1. The Gospel of Mark chapter 4, commencing verse 1. Praise the name of Jesus. We thank God that his word does not return to him void. And today I'm ministering to you on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Of course, we will not be able to get through all of the gifts today. But let's see where we can go. Matthew, Mark. Mark chapter 4, comments in verse 1. Again, Jesus. So we see the words again and Jesus. And it's in capital letters. Praise the name of Jesus. So why is Jesus doing something again? It tells us that he did it before because it says again, Jesus. So why, why does he want to repeat the same thing over and over again? Why? Why is that? It's to make a point because Romans 10, 17 tells us, So then, faith, I said faith, everybody say faith, faith, comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you want to hear the word of God, you're going to have to hear it again and again and again and again. Because that's how faith comes. It comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's the same way fear comes. Fear comes by hearing and hearing by the lies of the devil who only comes to steal, kill and destroy. So sometimes you will find um, Jesus repeating himself or you have to teach them again. If you want to be perfected in something, you're going to have to do it again and again and again. The first time you do it, you may not... Um, be very bold, you may not be very courageous, but as you do it again and again, you become more competent, you become more confident. So praise the name of Jesus. So um, again, Jesus began to teach besides the lake. Why did he do it again? He did it again because he wanted them to understand what he's saying. Because some people, some of you are like me, Sometimes I can hear something once and I get it, <laughs> which is wonderful when that happens. But sometimes I need to hear it again and then it becomes clear. And sometimes I need to hear it again and again and again. And then I can become perfected in it. It's like perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. And when you get to hear how much God loves you, you know, for God so loved the world, loved. And he still loves the world. Why does he still love the world? Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God is love. And when you hear about his love and you hear that he loves you over and over again, then you'll begin to believe it. If you first doubted it, then, and you hear more and more of his love, and then you look back in your life and you see the things that he's done for you. He's healed you. Even in this pandemic, um, in this coronavirus pandemic, you've seen how God has been faithful, how he's taken care of your family, how he has provided for you. Even when you thought you were going under, when you lost your job, how he provided another job for you, how he healed you in the past, and how he's protected you from all evil, because yay though, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yes, death is, lurk, is, is, is in the background. It's lurking. But yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear. We make a decision. I will fear no evil for thou art. Then you see that cup, my cup runneth over. And he says, surely, this is beyond the shadow of a doubt. Definitely, surely goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So, is coronavirus good? No. Is lack good? No. Is poverty good? No. Is losing your job good? No. He said, surely, without a shadow of a doubt, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So um, Jesus repeats things so that your faith, praise God, can increase, so that your joy can be full. And the Bible says, let everything be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. So that's why sometimes you have to keep hearing it again and again and again and again. So we give God honor and we give God glory. And it's because we haven't arrived, because we have to learn, we can learn from one another. So I haven't forgotten that I'll be speaking 
ministering to you about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So again, Jesus began to teach beside the lake and a very great crowd gathered about him. You know, these people were very intelligent. They were clever. Whenever Jesus was present, large multitudes followed. They wanted to hear what he had to say. One time he was preaching and the power of God was present to heal them. So when the word of God is being taught, you need to put yourself in a position to receive. It's a similar thing, I think it's Luke 10, I think it's Luke 10, 38, when um, Jesus house and Mary, she sat at Jesus' feet. She chose the right thing to do. Martha was a bit busy serving and then she was saying, you know, why don't you tell her to come and help? Why? <laughs> Jesus said Mary chose the better part and it will not be taken away from her because she was hungry for the word of God. Those who hunger and thirst will be filled. Praise the name of Jesus. We give God honor and we give God glory. God is a good God. He is wonderful. He is powerful. He is beautiful for every situation and in his presence. There's the fullness of joy. And at his right hand, they are pleasures forevermore. Actually, it wasn't in Luke um, 10, 38, but um, wherever it was, Jesus had um, visited the house and Martha was too busy. But Mary, she sat down to hear the word of God because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So now um, let's get into our text about the um, Holy Spirit. Um, because um, iron sharpens iron, we need each other. I need what you have and you need what I have. So, um, it's, you know, when, when God created Adam, he created the man before he created the woman. And Adam was alone, yes, there were the animals, he had the food, he had every, everything he needed, but he didn't have a suitable help meet. There was not a, um, well, he had God to commune with, but he needed another person on his level, another human being that he could speak to, who he can do something for, and who that person can do something for him. He needed a suitable help meet. So God created Eve. So we thank God for Eve, because God said it's not good for a man to be alone. That, that's why we need each other. The body of Christ, we need each other. You have your gifts, I need your gifts. Your gifts are for me and I have my gifts and my gifts are for you. One of my gifts are teaching. One of my gifts are writing. God has given me the gift to um, write books, to take verses in the Bible and everyday life experiences and different things and break them down into simple language so that you can understand. So many times when I'm studying, because the Bible said, study to show yourself a workman, rightly dividing the word of truth. Many times I would take another book and read alongside with the Bible and then I get a better understanding. Many times I read the Bible by itself, but sometimes I read it with another person's book. So iron sharpens iron and that's why we need each other. So even though you lifted, you're called, you're anointed by the Holy Spirit. We still need each other to come together as a corporate church because you may have the gift of faith and I may need to um, draw on your gift of faith because you may have the supernatural ability to believe things that are humanly impossible. And I may not believe in that much and I might need your faith to pull me along so I can receive my miracle. For example, if someone had cancer, and, and they didn't have the faith to believe God. They weren't so strong in the Lord and the power of his might as the other believer who's operating in the gift of faith. Then, then they can latch on to that person and draw from that gift. Or someone might be having a, a, a word of wisdom or we might be in a situation and we don't know what to do and we need a word from God today. And the other, the, the other person who's operating in the word of wisdom can help us. So iron sharpens each, iron sharpens iron, so we need each other. So let's go to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 as we begin to speak on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and I'm reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible. So uh, if you're joining me and you can get hold of a Bible, please, please, please get your Bible out and follow along with me because you'll have a dog 
dose of the anointing because it's coming through your ears and then it's coming through your eyes. And many times, sometimes people may not remember something someone has said, but sometimes they remember in picture forms. And then they, when they haven't read it, then they have more of a tendency to remember than just from hearing it alone. That's why God wrote his word down for us. So we can look at it, we can read it, we can pray it, we can praise it, we can ponder it, we can meditate on the word of God. And then in a time of trouble, what is going to come out? Word in, word out. No word in, no word out in a time of trouble. So when we need to cast down imaginations, when the devil who only comes to steal, kill and destroy, tells you you will die and not live and declare the works of the Lord, then you'll be able to speak the word and say, I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord because you've taken the time to hide the word of God in your heart. So in a time of trouble, that's what is going to come out. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12, comments in verse 1. Now, so now is present, present tense. This is something now. As I'm ministering to you on a live broadcast, I'm speaking to you now. Now about the spiritual gifts, the special endowments of supernatural energy. Brethren, I do not want you to be misinformed. So we thank God. This is the great apostle Paul. He loved the people. He cared so much about the church that he didn't want them to be ignorant about the spiritual gifts, the gifts that the Holy Spirit freely gives so that we can richly enjoy, the gifts that that we can uh, know about and operate in the gifts of the spirit so we can help our brother, we can help our brothers, our sisters when they're struggling. Like you, you may have a, um, a child and, and that child is not filled with the Holy Spirit because you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you may have a, um, a word of knowledge. So you, you, you can know the Holy Spirit may tell you the child may be in danger, about to be run down by a bus you know, about to get into trouble and the Holy Spirit may tell you to pray. And because you have the gift of speaking in tongues, which all believers can speak in tongues when they're filled with the Holy Spirit, because that's what the Holy Spirit gives to us. If you will yield to the Holy Spirit and then you can start praying in tongues for that child. And then maybe you may be able to ask that child, where were you at 12 o'clock such and such a time? The Holy Spirit puts it on my heart to pray for you. And that child and say, oh, I was nearly run down by a bus and the bus suddenly stopped. Praise God. And then you look back at the time that was the exact time you were praying. So that's why we need to know about these gifts. That's why we need to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He has given us these gifts freely. Freely have we, have we received, freely shall we give. So we don't use our gifts for ourselves. We use it to help others as well. So we thank God for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So the great apostle, he didn't want the people to be ignorant. He didn't want them to be perishing for a lack of knowledge. Because the Bible tells us in Hosea 4 verse 6, My people, how sad God must have been when he had to speak through the prophet Hosea to say, My people, the people who God loves, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave all that he had. He gave his love. He gave his power. He gave his might. He gave his strength. He gave his healing. He gave everything that he had. Even the world he has given to the children of God. Praise the name of Jesus. That he gave everything that he had. How sad it must be when he, when, when he says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So um, ignorance is not bliss. So that's why the Apostle Paul, he did not want the church to perish for a lack of knowledge. He wanted them to be intelligent. He wanted them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. He wanted them to be operating in the gifts of the Spirit so that they could help each other. Because the gifts of the Spirit are for the perfecting of the saints. Praise the name of Jesus. It's for the building up of the church. It's so that the um, lost can be saved. Because Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. So the great apostle Paul didn't want them to be ignorant. He didn't want them to lack anything that Jesus died to give them. He wanted them to have everything that, that, God, ha that God had sent his only begotten son to die so they could have, so they would not perish for a lack of knowledge. So he goes on to say in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2, You know that when you were hidden, 
Yeah, when you, that word hidden means nations. When you are a part of the nations, when you were not born again, when you were an enemy of God, when you had no time for God, when you were just seeking your own kingdom, when you were seeking for your will to be done, for having your ways and not to have God thoughts, Praise the name of Jesus. When you were lusting, when you were fornicating, when you were lying, when you were cheating, when you were a child of the devil, you didn't have any time with God. So that is what he's saying. You know that when you were hidden, when you were not born again, you were led off after idols. What is an idol? An idol is anything that comes first place in your life that you put before God. God has given some people husbands, wives or whatever, where well, one man, one wife, one, one woman, one husband. But he's given people, yeah, you may have a wife, you may have a husband, you may have a child or whatever it is. And sometimes people take the very things that God gives them and they make them idols. They put them before God. So, so that's what he's saying. So an idol is anything that comes before God. And God says in Exodus 20 verse 2, Thou shall have no other gods or besides me. So if you put your children first before God, you're making them an idol and they're in the wrong order. If you put your husband before you put God or before you seek God, you're making your husband an idol. If it's your work, if it's your um, favorite artist, your pop singer and they call them pop idols and all these things, but we're not supposed to have idols. It's an abomination to God. And God is a jealous God. So um, Paul is saying, you know, when you were hidden, this is before you were born again, before you were a new creation in Christ. Because as we are new creations in Christ, all things are passed away. Putting my husband first before I put God, that's passed away. Putting my children first before I put God, that's passed away. Um, lying, stealing covetousness and all these things, that's passed away. All things have passed away. The fresh and new have begun. So he's saying, you know that when you were hidden, you were led off after idols that could not speak habitably as impulse directed and whenever the occasion might arise. So he goes on in verse three. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking under the power and influence of the Holy Spirit of God can ever say, Jesus be cursed. You, you, if, if you were born again Christian, you're a new creation in Christ. I said all things have passed away and the fresh you can't curse God. You will not curse God. The Holy Spirit will not lead you to do something that's evil. That's, that's only um, people who are not born again can curse God. Praise the name of Jesus. Even um. Job, he was married to his wife, and in his time of affliction, all 10 of his children died all at once. You know, he had so many horrible things were happening to him. And then at one stage, um, he Satan in from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. He was people could not recognize him as Job, you know. It, it, he looked so bad, he smelled so bad, he felt so bad. Praise the name of Jesus. But in the middle of the affliction, what he did even before that happened, he um, he shaved. So he presented himself to God. He presented his body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. You can find that in Job chapter 1 and, the, and um, Job chapter 2. And he shaved and he worshipped God. Praise the name of Jesus. And in chapter 2, his wife told him. So you can find it, find it about when he was afflicted, he um, shaved and he worshiped God. He said, naked I came into the world and naked shall I leave. And he said, the Lord give it and the Lord take it. But it wasn't the Lord who was taking his healing. It wasn't the God, the Lord who was taking his strength. It was not, not, not the Lord that was doing these evil things to him. Because every good and perfect gift comes from God and God is good and he cannot do bad. A house dividing against itself cannot stand. So God is not good and evil at the same time. Either he is good or he's bad. And I'm telling you that he's good. There's no bad in him. There's no evil in him. There's nothing wrong in him. He's all perfect. So it was not God inflicting these things upon Job. Praise the name of Jesus. But in the midst of those trials and tribulations, Job, he shaved and he worshiped God. 
Hallelujah. So we give God honor and glory. And even though his wife told him to curse God and die, he didn't do it. So um, the Apostle Paul is saying that um, no one under the influence of the Holy Spirit can ever say that Jesus is cursed. You can't curse God when the Holy Spirit is influencing you. When the Holy Spirit is influencing you, we cannot sin. It's only when we decide, you know, when we're enticed by our own lust and we're drawn away from God, that's when we sin. But the Holy Spirit never uh, influences anyone to do anything that's bad. Praise the name of Jesus. That's why um, some sometimes, you know, like even probably as a child, you know, before you went into your mom's purse and you took that 25 cents and you bought sweets, you would hear the Holy Spirit saying, no, don't do this, don't do that. Or if your mom said, come straight home after school and your school friends tempted you and said, let's go and buy sweets or let's go to the market or whatever. And you would hear that little soft voice. It was the Holy Spirit who has followed you all your life who is still following you all your life, who is convicting you not to do wrong. Or like if you were tempted to exaggerate, to um, gossip about someone, it was the Holy Spirit who was telling you, don't do it. Praise the name of Jesus. So that's what um, Paul is saying. If, if you ever curse um, Jesus or tempted to curse, curse Jesus, it's not coming from the Holy Spirit. Back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. The second part of the verse. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for watching, you faithful friends and partners. And no one can really say, Jesus is my Lord. <laughs> you can't be born again except by and under the power and influence of the Holy Spirit. So it's only the Holy Spirit that is going to help to um, lead you to repentance because the Holy Spirit convicts you. You may use other people. You may use a pastor, a friend, a mother, a brother, a sister, whoever, to say the um, sinner's prayer to help you along the lines. But it's the Holy Spirit is behind it. He might be the unseen partner. Praise the name of Jesus that is doing all that work so that you can be convicted and born again. Now, verse four. Now, there are distinctive varieties and distributions of endowments, gifts, extraordinary powers, distinguishing certain Christians due to the power of divine grace operating in their souls by the Holy Spirit, and they vary, but the Holy Spirit remains the same. Praise the name of Jesus. So the great apostle Paul is saying, uh, the Holy Spirit comes with a variety of gifts. He comes with nine gifts and he's given them freely to the church. So these gifts may be different. You may be operating in a word of wisdom and you may know to do what to do when people don't know what to do. You may be the answer to that problem and it's coming from the Holy Spirit, but then you may have your friend she is um, operating in a, a word of knowledge. She may be able to tell you um, things about yourself. Praise the name of Jesus. Or uh, she may have the knowledge that she, she can go to church and she knows exactly what is going to happen in the meeting even before she knows the songs. She knows who's going to be sitting here or whatever. And it's only because of the Holy Spirit. But all these gifts are coming from the same Holy Spirit. So even though we have different gifts, it's coming from the Holy Spirit and we still need each other. These gifts are given for the perfecting of the saints. We even have the um, pastors, the apostles, the preachers, the teachers, and the evangelists. They're all gifts given to the body of Christ until we come to the unit, in the unity of the faith. And it's for the perfecting of the body of Christ. So now let's continue back with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Verse 5, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 5, for those of you who are now joining us. Thank you very much. And these are distinctive, sorry, and there, and there are distinctive varieties of service and ministration, but it is the same Lord who is served. So we have um, different varieties of services. You, you may be called into the ministry of helps. You, you may be um, a prayer aid. You may be a prayer minister in, in the body of Christ. You may be a pastor, you may be a teacher, you may be a, an apostle or whatever gifts you're operating in, whether you're operating in the gift of faith, the gift of tongues, word of wisdom, interpretation of tongues, discerning of spirits or whatever, but um, it's, oh, we're all serving the same Lord. So we need our gifts. We come together with our gifts to serve God. You, you may be the praise and worship leader. 
So your, your singing, your worship is for God, but your singing voice can bless me or help to usher me into the presence of God or to usher the body of Christ into the presence of God. So it's not for us to be puffed up and say, oh, look at me, I'm the best thing in the world or whatever. You know, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So we must remain humble regardless of what gift God has given us. It, it's just like um, the body. Because the hand cannot say I'm the hand, I don't need a wrist. Because I need a wrist to join me onto my hand. Or the finger, part of the finger can't say I, I don't need the knuckle. Because I need that knuckle to join these two parts of the finger together. The eyes can't say I'll be the eyes by myself. I need the body to lead and things like that. So we need each other. So you come with your gift of faith. I come with my word of knowledge. You come with hymns. You come with a song and up to make our um, spiritual uh, melody to the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. You come with your word of wisdom, gift of faith, gift of healing, discerning of spirits, and we all come together and we're one in Christ. And it's to help each other for the perfecting of the saints until we come into the unity of the faith. Verse six. And there are distinctive varieties of operation, of working to accomplish things. But it is the same Lord who inspires and energizes them all in all. So we have in all these gifts, but we must know our source is from God. Please hold your place in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And let's go quickly to James 1.17. Because he's telling us every good and perfect gift comes from God. Hebrews and then James. James chapter 1. Verse 17, and I'm reading from the Amplified Version again for those of you who are now joining. Father, we just thank you so much for your word, which cannot return to you, Lord. You're a faithful God, you're a wonderful God, you're a loving God, you're a healing God. Every good and perfect, free, large, full gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of all that gives light in shining of whom there can be no variation, rising or setting or shadow cast by his turning as in an eclipse. So you know where the source, where every good gift is coming from. If it's good, it's coming from God. If you were here, I would tell you to shout out loudly, God. If it's bad, it's coming from the devil. Because there's no evil with God. God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither does he tempt anyone with evil. So we're operating in these gifts for the body of Christ, for the perfecting of the saints, for the building up of the church to help to bring unbelievers into the body of Christ. Because sometimes you may see a, um, an unbeliever, God may use you in a way that you may be able to tell them so many things about themselves. You know, I, I know you've lost your job. Um, I, I know you need a new car and stuff. And then sometimes they might be thinking, oh, how can you know that? It's because you're the answer to their prayer. Because some people are saying, God, if you're real, send somebody, send a sign. And God may use you as that sign. You as that miracle. You as that person to lead them to the Lord. You as the one to pray for them. So we, we thank God. We must covet the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Because God in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, he tells us to follow after peace and all these things, but a better way to pursue the gifts of God. Let's read um, before we go back to 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 13, just turn the page over. We'll read verse 13, and then we'll read verse 1 Corinthians 14, 1. And so faith, hope, love, abide. Faith, conviction, and belief respecting man's relation to God and divine things, hope, joyful and confident expectant of external salvation. So we must expect things from God. When we pray, we need to expect. You do not just pray in with no hope, with no expectation, because without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we must expect, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you must expect something good. Something good is going to happen to me today. This is the day. This is the lovely day, the wonderful day, the perfect day that God has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So expect good things. Stop expecting bad things. Things are not as bad as you think. We serve a good God. We serve a healing God. We serve the redeeming God. And something good 
is going to happen to you today. And even for some strange reason, if it didn't, it will happen tomorrow. And if it didn't happen tomorrow, it will happen the next day. But put your faith in something. Happen to you today. So he's saying with this expectant faith, praise God, of external salvation, love, true affection for God and man, growing out of God's love for and in us. These things, but the greatest of these is love. So um, you may have uh, um, faith to remove mountains, operating the gift of faith properly. You may pray for the sick and they may recover today and be back in the same situation tomorrow. So walk in love so the gifts of the Spirit can operate effectively in your life and in the life of others. Because if you are sowing hate, when you, when you lay hands on the person that you're praying from, that spirit of hate can be transferred to them. That's why you don't lay hands on anyone easily. I don't allow any and every person to lay hands on you because not everybody who professes to be a child of God or a woman of God is a woman of God. You try the spirits to see if they're coming from God and you can find First John, praise the name of Jesus. We give God honor and we give God glory, right? So eagerly pursue and seek to acquire this love. Make it your aim and great quest and earnestly desire and cultivate the spiritual endowments, gifts. That's what we were talking about, the gifts in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Especially that you may prophesy, interpret the divine will and purpose in inspired preaching and teaching. So he's saying that we should go after these gifts. Praise God. But I'm telling you that love is essential for them to work properly. We need to walk in. Back to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Please turn back to our um, original teaching. Praise the name of Jesus because we said these gifts are coming from God and he inspires and energizes us. So we don't take credit. You know, you may lay hands on the sick and you see them recover or you may be operating in the gift of faith. Yeah, um, it's a supernatural faith coming directly from God or from the Holy Spirit that helps you to believe the humanly impossible. Whereas you can look at, at somebody who may, they may be sitting in a wheelchair and they don't have legs and you have that supernatural faith to believe that God will grow back two legs right before your eyes and you pray for that person and then you see it happening right before your eyes. That's a supernatural faith that God has given you and it's a gift. It is not for you to boast because it's like for by grace that we save through faith, not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest we should boast. So you, you should not be boasting about it. You, you, you should be uh, magnifying God and saying, it's not by might, it's not by power, it's but my, my spirit says the Lord. You don't want to be drawing a, um, a large following to you. You want to draw a large following towards Jesus. You put them back to the cross the source of all good, to God, the source of all good. This is where my health comes from. I look to the hills from whence come my way. Because we have some people who are earnestly desiring the um, gifts of the spirit and they want the gift of healing. But why do you want it? David was a man after God's own heart. You know, his heart was right. He may have made many mistakes, but his heart was right. So why, why do you want to operate in the gift of faith or the working of miracles? Is it so that um, everybody can say, oh, look at you. I, I went to Sister Pamela or Pastor Pamela and she laid hands on that person and the legs grew back right before my eyes or the cancer disappeared. But is it to draw a crowd to you? You know, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due time. So we need to design these things for the right things, for the right reasons, I mean, so that God can be glorified, so that his will can be done on earth as it is in heaven. So God can be given the glory as we um, begin to close because the time goes so quickly you come up here and you know um there's no um lack of word in heaven <laughs> so there's no shortage of word you know so we can just go on and on but i don't want to keep you too late many of you have to go to work and things like that so we have to have the right motive when we are motives when we are desiring these gifts and it is the holy spirit who actually decides who is going to have which gifts so even though you might want to have the gift of the faith of spirits because that may be what you need or those that are putting in your part who needs to have a word of wisdom praise the name of Jesus or, for, or who may be needed sorry the discerning of the spirits that you may be able to discern whether the spirits are coming from God or whether they are coming from the devil praise the name of Jesus 
Hallelujah. So that's why sometimes you have people want to join your church and they want these positions or put me on the prayer team and stuff. But if you have a discerning spirit, you will know whether that person should be on your department or not, or which department they should be on in the church. Verse 7, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the evidence, the spiritual illumination of the Spirit for good and profit. So these gifts are for the good and profit of the church, as well as non-believers, because you get to lead them to the Lord when you're operating in the gifts of the Spirit. Because sometimes some people, they, they're only going to believe unless they see miracles. Even when Jesus um, raised um, Lazarus from the dead, there, there were some people, many more were joined to the body of Christ because of that miracle. If, if he didn't raise Lazarus from the dead, that's why he waited. He waited four days. You know, Lazarus was dead. He was decomposed. He was thinking and everything. Praise God. And he, even uh, Martha was doubting it. And Jesus said, and I tell you that I am the resurrection. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And he, and he came forth. And many people were drawn into the kingdom because of that miracle. We have the man in um, John 9. He, he was born blind. And the people says, was he born blind? Was it because he had sinned or his parents had sinned or whatever? And Jesus said, it's not because of his sin or his parents' sins. He, had, he was born blind so that um, God could be glorified. Praise the name of Jesus. And then that same man was able to accept Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior through the miracle. Because Jesus um, told him, you know, after he had healed him and stuff. And he didn't even know who had healed him when the people were asking him who had healed him and where he was and different things. And um, then G Jesus was saying, do you know the son of God or do you know the son of man? And he said, he don't know, but tell me about him so I can believe. You know, and then Jesus told him about himself. You are speaking with him right now. And, and then he was um, born again. He became a new creation in Christ. So some people need the miracles so they, they can be saved because not everyone is going to believe. But blessed are those who believe by hearing who haven't seen than those who have to see to believe. So um, verse 8, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. So one is given in and through the Holy Spirit the power to speak a message of wisdom, praise God, and to another the power to express a word of knowledge and understanding according to the same Holy Spirit. So um, this person, let's look at the... Uh, the word of wisdom, the person was given the message of wisdom. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So I says, uh, well, wisdom, well, let me tell you what wisdom is. Wisdom is the principal thing in all of your getting, get understanding. And wisdom is knowing what to do, like when you don't know what to do, like God just supernaturally gives you the wisdom. Sometimes you might say something and then you think, and that was the answer to it. Where did it come from? Jesus was asking his disciples, who do men say they are, that he is. Some were saying, um, some says the prophet, some were saying Elijah and different things. And then he says, who do you say I am? And then people said, thou art the son of God, praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And then um, Jesus was able to say, flesh and blood had not revealed this to you, but the Holy Spirit, praise the name of Jesus, or even let this chapter nine because there was a um, there was a king he came and he besieged the city he seized that city he probably took the city by force and the people didn't know what to do but he was a very poor man but he was wise you know wisdom is the principal thing praise God if, if you have wisdom praise God because some people have money they get money by gambling or whatever but they don't know how to, to have, they don't have the wisdom as how to invest it wisely yeah, you see a lot of them win the lottery. They're rich today. Look back five years later, they're broke. Some people are rich today, broke tomorrow. But wisdom is the principal thing. And in all of your getting, get understanding. And wisdom is better than silver and gold. Poor man, you know, he knew how to um, save the city. And he gave them the wisdom as how to save the city. But because he was poor, he was this hate the poor they don't want to listen to a poor man but if they're, they're happy to listen to some um, rich celebrity or something but if someone's poor they don't really want to hear so they took the wisdom from their um, poor man and he was able to save the city praise the name of Jesus but they forgot about him praise God but we must not be an unthankful people like Jesus he healed the um, 10 lepers 
as they went, they were cleansed and, and they were well, because he told them to go and show themselves to the, um, to the, to the priests and stuff. And as they went, they were cleansed. And one turned back to give thanks. So like when that, that poor man saved the city, they, they, they forgot about him. They didn't give him any um, recon, recognition. Obviously, it was God using him, but they, they, they could have thanked him and they could have remembered him. So let's go to Ecclesiastes. Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, comments in verse 14. There was a little city. So we're talking about wisdom, even though we're talking about the gifts of um, the Spirit. I'm giving you an instance where God had given this man wisdom. So there was a little city with few men in it. So they didn't have many people. It was a very small city. And a great king came against it and besieged it and built great bulwarks against it. So he came and he took that, that city by force and he was doing what he wanted. Praise God. Hallelujah. Some people are rich and they oppress the poor and God hates that. Verse 15. But there was found a poor wise man. He was poor, but he was wise and wisdom is better than silver and gold. Because even if you lose everything, you have the wisdom, you can get it back again. If God healed you once, he'll heal you again. And it's not if, since God healed you once, he'll heal you again. Since God saved you, he'll continue to save you. He'll continue to protect you. Praise God. It was just like David, when he had killed the uh, bear and the lion with his bare hands, he was able to testify what God had done for him. And he knew that he could um, kill Goliath, the circumcised Philistine, who was coming against the armies of the living God and he defeated Goliath with one sling and one stone so whatever Goliath is coming against you I'm here to tell you with God's help you can defeat that Goliath whether it's a Goliath of poverty a Goliath of disobedience in a child a Goliath of unfaithfulness a Goliath of a job loss God will give you another job God will perfect that which concerns you the Lord is my shepherd to feed guide and shield me you can find that in Psalm, Psalms 1 I shall not lack. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. All, 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 all. What does all mean? Every day, all the time, 24 hours a day, all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So the enemy may come against you with coronavirus. He may come against you with a rebellious child. He may come against you saying your family will never be saved. But that Goliath is going to be slain. It's going to be slain because we're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed in our we're blessed in our going out. We serve a faithful God and God cannot lie. And if he said he will perfect that which concerns us, which he has, he will perfect that which concerns us. Stay faithful to God. Continue trusting. Continue believing. Continue obeying. Continue praying. Continue praising. And that Goliath will be slain, just like how David slayed that uncircumcised Philistine with one sling and one stone. He had five stones, but he only had to use one. And he cut off Goliath's head with his own sword. Praise the name of Jesus. God has a, a, a sense of humor. What the enemy meant for harm, just as he did in Joseph's case, he will do, he will turn it around for your good. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God has not formed weapons against you, but he can turn it around for your good. The enemy will come against you one way and he will flee seven ways. No evil shall befall us. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us in judgment, we shall condemn. So when people speak a bad report over you, you open your mouth because life and death is in the power of the tongue. And you speak, I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. This is not the final report because this is not the report from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will not fail. Praise God. He exalts his word above his name. So whatever God says, it settles it. If the doctor says you're sick and you're going to die tomorrow and you want to continue living, you stand on Psalm 91. With long life will God satisfy me and show me his salvation. With long, 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 long life will God satisfy me and show me his salvation. I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. God cannot lie. He cannot fail. So the um, poor man, he he was filled with wisdom. He had wisdom how to save the city, but they soon forgot about it. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 15. Let's go back there. But there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city. So God gave him wisdom as how to deliver the city because we read in James 1, 17, every good and perfect gift comes from God. Yet no man seriously remembered that poor man. 
But I say that wisdom is better than might. And though the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heeded, the words of wise men heard in quiet are better than the shouts of him who rules among fools. And the fool, the empty headed fool said in his heart, there is no God. So let us not be fools today. Let us acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of our lives today. So wisdom is better than weapons, than weapons of war. But one sinner destroys much good. So life and death is in the power of the tongue. So when you hear negative reports about you or coming over the news, all ethnic minorities, um, they have the tendency to die from coronavirus. And like if everything bad is black, you reject that in the name of Jesus because Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Yes, more black people may have died from the coronavirus according to records or whatever, but that, that's not the final word. Uh, many black people have been exposed more to the virus because lots of them, they work in the NHS, they work in care homes. Uh, and God says he has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. And who God blesses, no one can curse. It doesn't matter what people say, you open your mouth and you negate that curse. It may have happened in the past, more black people or whatever, or ethnic minorities may have died from the coronavirus. But that's the you just open your mouth and say, but thank God that's not going to happen to me. Thank God that's not going to happen to my family. As for me and my house, we will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. We will serve the Lord. That's what Joshua said. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Sometimes it may look like you've been praying for your family for a long time, years and years. And instead of people getting better, it looks like if they're getting worse, but you open your mouth and you say what you want. Not what it looks like, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Life and death is in the power of the town. People speak a negative report over you and your family. You open your mouth and they gave that report. Praise God. And it doesn't have to come true for you. Praise God. Because no weapon, no weapon, say no weapon. Come on, church. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every time that rise up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. You open your mouth and condemn it. Praise God. Not because something has happened in the past, it doesn't mean it's going to happen in the future. God is a God of restoration. He can restore things. He can restore your joy. He can restore your marriage. Praise God. He can restore your health. Yes, I said it before. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Who is with me? The lovely one is with me. The perfect one is with me. The healing one is with me. The redeemer is with me. The one with whom all things are possible is with me. So it may look bad, but God will reverse the problem. He will give you double for your trouble if you hold on, hold fast the profession of your faith without wavering. Praise the name of Jesus. So that little man in Ecclesiastes chapter nine, he operated in the word of wisdom. Praise God. It was even like in our, as we conclude in John chapter two, praise the name of Jesus. The people, they were having the wedding and they faced the situation of embarrassment because they ran out of wine. Praise the name of Jesus. And we thank God. God God is a good God. And, and, and um, Jesus' mom, she had like a, a word of um, wisdom. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Or, or, or a word of knowledge. Because sometimes they can work very similar. And, and she said, whatever he says to you, do it. Praise God. So we're going to conclude there. I know we didn't get too much into the gifts of the Spirit, but I don't want to keep you too long. You have to work. You have to do different things. But hopefully um, next week, if the Holy Spirit permits, we will get back to the gifts of the Spirit. So let's go to John chapter 2 as we conclude. Praise God, where Jesus performed his first um, miracle in public. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This is one was the first one that was recorded in the Bible. Because uh, Mary's mother, she had the word of um, knowledge, or word of wisdom. She was able to tell them that, um, you know, whatever Jesus tells you to do, do. And, and, and they did it and everything was okay. Let me read quickly. John chapter 2, comments in verse 1. And the third day, there was a wedding at Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Thank God that she was in the right place and at the right time. And Jesus was there also. So they were wise. They used wisdom when they invited him. Because if he was not there, when the embarrassment came, when they ran out of wine, what would they have done? They would have been in trouble. Praise the name of Jesus. Probably like the foolish virgins 
people who were looking for oil at the wrong time, the five foolish ones. And then the bridegroom came and the door was shut and it was too late for them. Praise the name of Jesus. So Jesus also was invited with his disciples to the wedding. Verse 3. When the wine was all gone, so the um, Holy Spirit would have told them to buy more wine and stuff, but they probably didn't hear. Sometimes people have the radio on, they always have the television on, they always have the internet on or something because they want to blast Jesus out. They don't want to hear the um, voice of God. You know, they, they just want to keep him away. He's bothering them too much. So they just want to block him out so they have all this excessive noise going all the time. They always have to be doing something. You know, the Bible says, be still and know that I'm God. So they're not making time to sit down and get into the presence of God because they know they will hear from him. And because what he tells them, they may not, they may not like it, so they don't want to hear it. So they block him out. It's just like sometimes I'm trying to sleep and other people are making noise. Sometimes I may have to put some tissues or something to block my ears up. Or, or sometimes I might have to put earplugs in or put on a radio or something to block out that noise so I, I can sleep, praise God. Because if, if I'm playing healing scriptures, it's at a stable level. And it's not jumping me up and down out of my sleep. Like how outside sounds can be erratic sometimes. Praise the name of Jesus, up and down. So, um, yeah, the Holy Spirit probably told them that they needed to buy more wine, but for some reason either they forgot or they didn't hear or they were too busy or whatever. And when the wine was all gone, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no more wine. Why is she telling Jesus this? And Jesus said, my time hasn't come. Because she knew that he solves problems. He specializes in, in impossibilities. If you're in lack, you go to Jesus. If you're in need of healing, you go to Jesus. If you're in need of strength, you go to Jesus. If you're in need of joy, you go to Jesus. If you're in need of peace, you go to Jesus. Praise God. He's the source of all good. He's the source of everything that you need and more. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. So now Jesus is responding to her. John 2 verse 4. Jesus said to her, Dear woman, so he addressed her correctly. What is that to you and to me? So he's asking her a question. What have we in common? Leave it to me. So he's saying, don't worry, don't fret, don't be anxious. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. Everything is going to be okay. Jesus is here. It's going to be okay. And I'm here to tell you whatever problem you're going through, Jesus is with you. It will be okay. If your spouse has left you, as sad as it seems, and you're sorrowful and things like that, Jesus is here. It's okay. He'll either um, help to get the marriage mended.